All right, good afternoon. Uh, first, some travel to announce. The Secretary General will be traveling tomorrow to the Netherlands, where he will attend a uh, where he will attend on Thursday the closing ceremony of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia in the presence of His Majesty King Wilhelm Alexander of the Netherlands. The Secretary General will also meet on Thursday with Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte and other senior of government officials, and he will also uh, have dinner uh, hosted by the by the King as well as uh, Queen Maxima. While in The Hague, the Secretary General will also meet uh, at the Peace Palace with the President and members of the International Court of Justice and the President of the International Criminal Court. The Secretary General is also scheduled to speak at an event, the UN on current threats uh, to international peace and security at the Peace Palace, together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister for Foreign Trade and Development of Cooperation of the Netherlands. And on Friday, the Secretary General will open a humanitarian data center uh, in an event uh, that has been co-sponsored by our colleagues at the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Here, as you will have seen, Stefan de Mistor, the Special Envoy for Syria, briefed the Security Council this morning on the conclusion of the eighth round of the intra-Syrian talks in Geneva. He noted the Syrian government's refusal to meet directly with the opposition until the Riyadh II declaration was withdrawn. The Special Envoy said the time had come for the UN to provide specific elaboration on the constitutional and electoral baskets. Mr. Di Mistor proposed a series of next steps, which he said would come from his intense engagement with the parties to implement Resolution 2254. And the full text of his remarks have been distributed. Meanwhile, Mark Lowcock, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, also briefed the Council, and he welcomed the Security Council's adoption earlier today of a resolution extending Resolution 2165 on humanitarian access in Syria for an additional 12 months. He said that cross-border deliveries will remain an essential part of our effort to meet the needs of all those across Syria who require humanitarian assistance. And he added that in besieged eastern Ghouta, increased fighting and lack of humanitarian access is rendering life unbearable for an estimated 393,000 people trapped inside the enclave. And turning to Yemen, the Office for the High Commissioner for Human Rights said it's deeply concerned at the recent surge in civilian casualties in Yemen, a result of intensified airstrikes by the Saudi-led coalition uh, following the killing of former President Ali Abdullah Saleh in Sana'a on December 4th. The Human Rights Office in Yemen verified 136 civilians and uh, civilians and non-combatants were killed and 87 injured as a result of the airstrikes in Sana'a, Sada, al hudaida and Taiz Governorate from the 6th to the 16th of December. The office urges all parties to the conflict to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law, including their obligations to respect the principles of distinction, proportionality, and precaution. They should take all feasible precautions to avoid, avoid and in any event, to minimize the impact of violence on civilians. And I was also asked earlier today for a reaction on the reports that Saudi Arabia had intercepted a missile fired from Yemen and that the Houthis have claimed responsibility for its firing. While we're not able to independently verify, to confirm uh, the report, we do condemn all attacks targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure. We urge all parties to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law. We call for restraint amid the mounting tensions and reiterate that military escalation is not the solution. We urge all parties to the conflict to engage meaningfully with the UN to revitalize the inclusive negotiations on political settlement. And the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, is wrapping up a visit to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, this morning, he visited the Simuliki base in North Kivu, which had been attacked on December 7th uh, by ADF militia members to meet. Uh, he did this to meet with peacekeepers who were stationed there and gain a better understanding of what actually happened. He also visited the Monusco facilities in Mavivi and an operating base in Kamango before heading back to Beni. As you know, the Under Secretary General traveled to the country after one of the worst attacks on UN peacekeepers in recent history, in which 14 Blue Helmets from Tanzania were killed and more than 40 others were injured. And a couple of notes from our colleagues at UNHCR. 
Um, turning to Ukraine, they note as temperatures plummet across the country, uh, they report they are stepping up distribution of aid, including clothing, fuel, and cash to the most vulnerable people impacted by the conflict in the eastern part of the country. The aid items will reach some 15,000 people who are mainly single parents, elderly families with many children, and people with disabilities or chronic illnesses. UNHCR also reports that the agency is stepping up its presence in southeastern Nigeria to provide life-saving support to thousands of people fleeing unrest in the English-speaking uh, parts of Cameroon. Since tensions intensified in October, UNHCR and government teams have registered over 7,200 arrivals in remote areas of Nigerians Cross River State, thousands more awaiting registration. Most of the registered asylum seekers are women and children and are hosted by local communities near the border. But as the unrest in Cameroon continues and more asylum seekers arrive, UNHCR is concerned that local population's capacity will soon be stretched to its limits. Um, after we're done here, Brendan uh, will brief on behalf of the PGA. And uh, just a reminder, of course, that I'm sure Brendan will have more on this, but tomorrow at 1 p.m., the President of the General Assembly will hold a press conference in this very room. Then you may ask it, sir. Uh, on the humanitarian data center, you said the SG is going to open on Friday. The humanitarian uh, data, it's a humanitarian data uh, data center, monitoring center in the Hague. Is in the Hague? In the Hague. Is, uh, okay, yeah. so th there is office for a humanitarian office there? It's, it's uh, in conjunction with the Dutch government and, and OCHA. It's oh, a data okay, center. Okay, thank you. I have, uh, I have a, another question, if you allow me. Does the UN have like a list of countries, like a black list of countries, member states that they, they viol, uh, violate uh, Security Council resolution, General Assembly resolution, like, uh, and if you don't, why not? I mean, since you have. I think the, uh, each, uh, the resolutions imposing uh, sanctions by the Security Council are monitored by secu Security Council uh, committees. They are responsible for for monitoring those uh, uh, those committees, uh, the Secretary General reports back as required from uh, depending on the resolutions on implementation of uh, resolutions. So uh, there is a reporting uh, there is a reporting mechanism built in resolutions, whether it's through a sanctions committee or through reports of the security of the Secretary General to the Security Council. Mr. Lee, sure. You, you, I wanted to ask you something about UNICEF, but first, on DRC, you said, you know, the ADF, which did the attack. And I know that earlier when Mr. Lacroix was here, they said that they were looking into it. Do you have some kind of a further detail? I mean, I'm, have they claimed credit for it? What, what, what's the, and what are the plans to actually, I've seen headlines saying that the UN is now going to take the ADF on. Can you just say, give a little bit more? Uh, I think maybe look, Mr. Lacroix announced this, but what's the evidence behind it and what are the plans to well, take them Well, I think it's on? based on information uh, the mission has been able to, uh, to procure uh, locally that they feel comfortable in, uh, in, in saying that. Uh, and obviously we have a mandate to fulfill in, uh, in the DRC and uh, we will do so. Your next question. Sir. Sure, I wanted to ask you, it, it, was it, it went to cover that event at UNICEF yesterday, and, and it, it, I think that, that uh, Anthony Lake is having his farewell mm -hmm. today. Many people have been waiting for this announcement of the new head of UNICEF. Mm -hmm. um, can you confirm that it is in fact Henrietta Four, and that there was a short list of four, including a former health minister of Mozambique? Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you, I guess in, in the spirit of kind of transparency, like did he recruit names from countries other than the United States, and, and what's the status of naming a new head? Uh, I'm waiting for for an announcement. Hopefully, any day, uh, any day now. As you know, I'm I'm not able to confirm it because, frankly, I don't know who is on the short list, and I definitely do not know who is going to be named. Is there a process? My, my understanding is that he's he's decided. To, does he have to check yeah, formally? Yeah, it's, do, it's executive done. Board? It's done in consultation with the executive okay. board of UNICEF. And and this is you're, you may not like this one, but I just want to ask it because I want to understand it better. In going to cover the event yesterday. Um, on my way over there, I noticed, you know, two, two cars in front of the building. And when I got there, I saw the Secretary General drive up in the two cars. And it seems like it's only half a block away. Maybe he was going somewhere else, but I just want to be clear, like, given all the statements from here about climate change and various things, w what's the explanation of two cars to go half a block? I, uh, I don't know if he went half a block. I'm not aware of all the Secretary General's 
movements and we will not uh, speak on security issues. Mr. Abadi. Thank you, Stefan. The Secretary General is scheduled to receive later on the Deputy Foreign Minister of China. Mm -hmm. What is the subject under discussion? Uh, I don't know. We'll see if we can get some sort of a readout, but the meeting was done uh, most likely at the request of the Chinese side. All right, but the, the enthusiasm is uh, so well. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's visible. proportional to the crowd. <laughs> well, okay. I wanted to ask you maybe whether you can confirm this. In, in, first, there's there's a uh, report today that the Kenyan police has lo have locked up children as young as four to ten years old. And the reason I'm asking is that see, there's a separate report saying that UNODC has decided to suspend its cooperation with yeah. the Kenyan police based on. Alleged brutality during the the, the recent election. Yeah, I election. saw the I saw the press reports from UNODC um, trying to get some information from uh, from them to be able to confirm exactly what what cooperation had there been and what what has been um, what has been stopped. And I guess just to understand, does UNO it doesn't have its own executive board, but who do they they just they decide on their own? I mean, maybe when you get this information, because sure, I mean, there there's a country team that's pretty yeah. that was very praising of the process, and yeah. I haven't seen them comment okay. about. We'll see what we can get. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if this question for you or for Brendan. It's but for Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's normally it's for you on 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 Thursday meeting for the GA. How many letters the SG office received from member state about the meeting on Jerusalem on, on I Thursday? I think that is for Brendan because I think the requests have gone to the president of General Assembly. What about the Secretary General's role in this this impending budget? I mean, things seem to be coming to a head. It was said that the goal is to finish it on Friday. It seems like he's going to be out of town. Does he play any role in, in, in defending his budget and trying to well, bring the sides his, together? Well, his, uh, his senior officials are, uh, in, are available or in dialogue with uh, Fifth Committee and come down as requested in, to, answer, uh, to answer questions. It's obviously a process that we are watching, uh, watching closely, and I know the Secretary General is in, in, in touch with the chair of the fifth committee of the General Assembly. Thank you.